Hi friends, I'm on my backup channel on my original Zoom. Um, and I think I might have to force myself to sleep in the cabin for a week so that every time I wake up at ungodly hours, I can just start re-uploading videos that were taken down from my main channel. I had almost 400,000 views on my main YouTube channel and I had almost 600,000 views on my blog, which has links to my YouTube channel. So a million hits um, to recover from or lost, not lost. I mean, those people saw those things, but I uh, need to do some work to get them back up and get this channel back up. Please get, please share it and get the word out and ask people to subscribe. Um, for however long it's here, you know, YouTube's been doing some pretty shocking things. Big Tech's been doing some pretty shocking things. Um, yeah, but anyway, look, maybe we'll get a book or two or three written because they can't, well, they can burn the books, but it's a bit harder for them than tech. So let's have some music from Talk New York and, uh, and then the book of Hebrews, we'll do two chapters of the book of Hebrews. And at five o'clock today, I'm going to be doing a live stream with Andy, uh, Divine, um, with uh, updates such as they are. But we're going to go for information out there on the Wilfred Wong, Onka Hill case, because Andy's in Greece. I'm in the, I'm in the Republic of Ireland. Um, there's no D notice, and uh, I don't believe we're subject to British law. And I'm going to be doing a show with Baron David Ward to actually discuss the futility of the contempt of court laws, the illegality of them. That'll be Monday or Tuesday. So we'll just continue to be brave. Okay, share screen. I'm down, I'm a bit down today. I'm going to finish emptying my mother's house tomorrow and it's um, a bit devastating. Well, you know, if you watch the videos on this channel, you'll know that I've called my mother a narcissist, an enabler, a criminal, you know, guilty of criminal neglect and failure to protect and all sorts of things. But in five generations of abuse, um, and MK Ultra and intelligence services and no consent experiments, projects. My mum was a victim too. And probably my dad, although I'm, I can't see myself going to his funeral. Right, sorry guys, right, let's just carry on a bit and, and let's just jump a bit on. I had timestamps, but they've somehow gone from the comments. Let's jump on. Sorry. Be any like. I should have lined it up. I did line it up. I'll tell you. I did line it up, but my time we're, 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 we're taking a spin. Oh, okay. They have to try to just deter us. We will not turn from our path. No, my time stamps have gone, so we'll go back to the beginning. <laughs> Oh, they have this great room. I might pause. I'm opening it up I'll now. We keep, the, we keep the gift all the way open until like the middle week of January. Right, so, so let's have a look if I can find this. They've got this amazing dance routine. He chooses a vessel. All right, guys. We're going to stop sharing and find a timestamp of something that I love. And um, you know, we, don't, we don't pretend to be perfect. We just pretend to be authentic so no i can't i can't research on pause it won't let me minimize so we'll just go screen share it and we'll do our best and i will find that particular dance routine that i want to find unless i just could find it instantly let's have a look what is that? Well, this might be it. Is my son getting cold? 
to always be forever. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Do all praise be in your drawing me. Do all praise be forever as in your arms. I love what God just did. Do you see that? Did you see that, people? We just found the timestamp. One of the church members works at um, the American Ballet, and uh, I didn't even play the whole of that routine, but it's so, so gorgeous. Um, okay, the book of Hebrews in the message translation, chapter one, with my son getting cold for the range in the background. But we don't have Ruby. She's in the house today. All right, giving now going <clears throat> through a long line of prophets. Look, first of all, Holy Spirit, please enlighten this to me. Please encourage me. Please encourage everybody within the sound of my voice. And please, Lord, um, Father God, send your angels and just disseminate your word and your miracles and your power, show your power to as wide an audience as possible in Jesus' name. Share this in church with anybody that's not like really up with Bible study or Bible reading or share this in prisons, you know, with people that would do better with audio than maybe can't read or write, you know, just share this anywhere that it will make a difference. Going through a long line of prophets, God has been addressing our ancestors in different ways for centuries. Recently, he spoke to us directly through his son. By his son, God created the world in the beginning, and it will all belong to the son at the end, S-O-N. This son perfectly mirrors God and is stamped with God's nature, as are we. He holds everything together by what he says, powerful words. The sun is higher than angels, of course he is. After he finished the sacrifice for sins, the sun took his honored place high in the heavens, right alongside God, far higher than any angel in rank and rule. Did God ever say to an angel, you're my son, today I celebrate you, or I'm his father, he's my son? When he presents his honored son to the world, he says, all angels must worship him. Regarding angels, he says, the messengers are winds, the servants are tongues of fire. But he says to the son, your God and on the throne for good. Your rule makes everything right. You love it when things are right. You hate it when things are wrong. That is why God, your God, poured fragment, fragrant oil on your head, marking you out as king, far above your dear companions. And again to the sun, you master started it all, laid earth's foundations, then crafted the skies, stars in the sky. Earth and sky will wear out, but not you. They become threadbare like an old coat. You'll fold them up like a worn out cloak and lay them away on the shelf. But you will stay the same year after year. You'll never fade, you'll never wear out. Wow. See, this is something that the globalists and the Luciferians are terrified of, which is why they push sort of fake climate change and sustainability and all this stuff about, oh, the earth's gonna run out, it's gonna run out because they want to, the holy grail for them is to find immortality, so they never have to face judgment. And so if they think they're going to be immortal, they think also they have to keep the earth going forever. But here it says, earth and sky will wear out, but not you. They become threadbare, like an old coat. It's interesting. 
And did God ever say to an angel, sit alongside me here on my throne till I make your enemies a stool for your feet? Isn't it obvious that all angels are sent to help out with those lined up to receive salvation? Yeah, don't worship angels, people. I see some of this, what do they call it, Archangel Michael worship and angel cards and angel worship. No, they are created beings. Don't worship created beings. Worship only God. You can ask God to dispatch ministering angels, warfare angels, guardian angels, uh, you know, legions, myriads, millions of angels. But don't worship the angels or you're missing it. That's like worshipping creation instead of the creator. Right, Hebrews chapter 2. <clears throat> it's crucial that we keep a firm grip on what we've heard so that we don't drift off. If the old message delivered by the angels was valid and nobody got away with anything, do you think we can risk neglecting this latest message? this magnificent salvation. First of all, it was delivered in person by the master, then accurately passed on to us by those who heard it from him. All the while, God was validating it with gifts through the Holy Spirit, all sorts of signs and miracles as he saw fit. So yeah, miracles, signs and wonders is a God thing, but magicians, even since biblical days, like Simon the sorcerer, um, or the seven brothers that magicians and sorcerers have always tried to imitate. And um, they can do tricks and slate of hand, um, but not, not it's only a pale, pale imitation of what God does. The salvation pioneer. God didn't put angels in charge of this business of salvation that we're dealing with here. It says in scripture, what is man and woman that you bother with them? Why take a second look then, their way? You made them not quite as high as angels, bright with Eden's dawn light. Then you put them in charge of your entire handcrafted world. Check the King James translation here. You've got to be careful about light. Love and light, because Lucifer uh, appeared as an angel of light. And uh, the New Age disguises a lot of um, unbiblical stuff by calling it the light. Um, and as well, this is again where I say read the whole Bible or the whole chapter or the whole book to get things in context, because here it says, yes, he put, God, he put man in charge of this world, but by Adam and Eve's sin, that authority legally went to Satan, Lucifer, and the, it was Satan. And the only way to take it back from him is by personal repentance and personal acceptance of Jesus sacrifice on our behalf and then personal reconnection with your creator through jesus so unless you're born again you the, the world your if you're born again your world your sphere of influence your existence is reconnected to god um but if you're not satan's got the authority that's just the truth on this earth, in this timeline. When God put them in charge of everything, he's talking about, you know, man, nothing was excluded. But we don't see it yet, don't see everything under human jurisdiction. No, we don't. That's just what I was saying. What we do see is Jesus made, quote, not quite as high as angels. What? And then, through the experience of death, crowned so much higher than any angel. Oh, so they're saying when Jesus was a human, when he was man, he would be counted as not quite as high as angels. But then, through the experience of death and resurrection, 
crowned so much higher than any angel with glory, bright with Eden's dawn light. In that death, by God's grace, he fully experienced death in every person's place. That's interesting. So they're saying that Jesus, as the man, was not quite as high as the angels, but as the man God raised from the dead and then seated at the right hand of his father, he then reassumed his authority over the angels. I'm not sure about the, I'm not sure about that translation. <clears throat> this is why people like Tom Dunn and others say the message translation is not reliable. But I'm still going to persevere just because it's accessible. But I'll highlight for you areas that you should look at in another translation. It makes good sense that the God who got everything started and keeps everything going now completes the work by making the salvation pioneer perfect through suffering as he leads all these people to glory, I presume they're referring to Jesus. Since the one who saves and those who are saved have a common origin, Jesus doesn't hesitate to treat his family, saying, I'll tell my good friends, my brothers and sisters, all I know about you. I join them in worship and praise to you. Again, he puts himself in the same family circle when he says, even I live by placing my trust in God. Because he did, you know, it's like in the Garden of Gethsemane, he sweat, he sweat blood and wept tears. Such was his anguish at the upcoming crucifixion. And he said, if it be possible, take this cup from me, and yet not my will, but yours be done. So he did, he prayed to the Father. And yet again, he says, I'm here with the children God gave me. Since the children are made of flesh and blood, it's logical that the Saviour took on flesh and blood in order to rescue them by his death. By embracing death, taking it into himself, he destroyed the devil's hold on death and freed all who cower through life, scared to death of death. You know, Luciferianism and Satanism is a death, they are death cults, and they are driven by an absolute terror. You know, a delight in causing death for others and yet a terror of their own passing. It's obvious, of course, that he didn't go to all this trouble for angels, it was for people like us, children of Abraham. And that doesn't just mean Jews. We are all children of Abraham. We um, are born again. That's why he had to enter into every detail of human life. Then when he came before God as high priest to get rid of the people's sins, he would have already experienced it all himself all the pain, all the testing, and we'll be able to help where help was needed. We'll leave that there for now. And I think I'll just go back and see if I can find the very beginning of this dance, because I just love it so much. Maybe it's here. I do love dance, that's my thing. Well, <laughs> kind of kept me sane in my teenage years. Okay, hard to find it. Here we go. Talknyc.org. To play the video, we yeah. become so accustomed to seeing our yeah. beautiful people and dancing with our beautiful music. And in this space, we're going to just dance before the Lord. Come down, put your offering in the buckets, and give cheerfully. And we will be back shortly with you. And I know giving, particularly in the Western world, not even like like. Like England, I don't know, Europe, there's this shame about giving and receiving. But most of the people shouting and say, oh, they got a go from me. Oh, they're looking for support for doing what work they do. They're probably on benefits. So you don't feel ashamed of going and getting your dole or your pension, or, well, your pension you've earned with stamps, but your disability or whatever, and yet you finger point finger point finger point you know like are you getting the covid um you know supplementary income if you are get off your high horse 
there's that there is i absolutely oppose financial uh abuse i absolutely oppose secrecy lack of transparency i absolutely oppose obscene wealth um i absolutely oppose corruption but that is a laborer is worthy of his hire and it is biblical to give at least 10 percent that there might be food in my house god says just that there might be malachi 310 and that's not a rule it's just and i've taught myself over the years the times when i'm giving and, and i'm okay with it and i'm just releasing it i'm blessed the times when i think Oh, they're all after my money and I hold on to everything. There's holes in my pockets. So, you know, just test yourself before you get on your high horse about who's, um, who's, say, who's saying, you know, it's okay to give and it's okay to receive. But I do advocate transparency and integrity, absolutely. Play it, please, Mrs. Hi, D. My Benson. name is Ashley, and you just heard an awesome message on tithes and offerings from one of our members. So this is the part where you can give. You can give through our website at torque.org forward slash give, or you can download the Torque app. Whether you have an Android or an Apple device, just go to your app store and type in Torque app. Now, without further ado, we are going to play an awesome video that you can dance along to because we believe giving with a cheerful heart is very important. So I don't care where you are. You could be in the living room, in the kitchen, on the subway. Get up out of that seat and get down. We'll see you soon. We are one to stuff beyond what I could ever imagine. Taken over me, heart and soul. And in the darkest hour, your hand reached out and brought me in freedom. The coldest winter is no more. And you give. Okay, guys, um, onwards and upwards, and um, love you guys. Pray, 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 share, and then do something. <laughs>